Hello everyone! As promised, this is Ultra Structure of the Cell Part 2. In here, we will be dealing with the endomembrane system, the mitochondria, specialized plant cell structures, and other cell organelles. This lecture is primarily based on Star and Chagar 2004, Biology, Unity and Diversity of Life, 10th edition. The endomembrane system is a collection of membranous structures involved in transport within the cell. The main components of the endomembrane system are the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, vesicles, and cell membrane and nuclear envelope. The endomembrane system is responsible for processing, sorting, and packaging membrane materials. Proteins embedded in membranes and large water-soluble molecules such as proteins or carbohydrates uh, either for export from the cell or to be used within the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum is the ultimate source of the membranes of the endomembrane system. And so, let's study first endoplasmic reticulum. This is an organelle located near and around nucleus and contains cisternae, which are flat sacs with nuclear envelope. Endoplasmic reticulum is categorized in two types, the rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has many ribosomes in it. And this is responsible in transporting proteins made in ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes and curves in the cytoplasm like connecting pipes, which serves in lipid synthesis. Now the ribosomes are the ones making the proteins. Cells always need protein and proteins are produced by ribosomes which are either free-floating in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We will be having a separate discussion on protein synthesis. Now let's go to the Golgi complex. So the Golgi complex is a major component of the endomembrane system. And in most cells, its primary role is secretion. The term Golgi complex refers collectively to all the Golgi bodies in a cell. Golgi bodies were once commonly called dictosomes in plants. When viewed through an electron microscope, a single Golgi body is composed of a series of uh, typically four to eight round flattened membranous sacs called the cisternae. This stack of sacs has two sides. The cisterna on the C side here often faces the endoplasmic reticulum, while the cisterna on the trans side here faces away from the endoplasmic reticulum. When put together, the endomembrane system functions in synthesis and secretion. A protein is synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and enters the interior. The protein moves to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum where it is enclosed in a transport vesicle. The vesicle is detached and travels to the Golgi complex and empties its content to the innermost cell. Upon appropriate stimulation, the vesicle travels to the plasma membrane and fuses with it, secreting the protein to the cell's exterior. Okay, now let's go to the mitochondria. Mitochondria play an essential role in the generation of energy in eukaryotic cells. Most cells contain several hundreds of mitochondria. The efficiency of the mitochondria 
in adenosine triphosphate or ATP production provides the energy source that powers all the varied activities occurring in the eukaryotic cells. For this reason, mitochondria is usually called the powerhouse of the cell. Each mitochondrion has a double membrane system. The outer membrane faces the cytoplasm while the inner membrane folds back on itself to form the cristae. The membrane system forms two distinct compartments within the mitochondrion. The machinery that carries the most efficient energy releasing reactions is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Electron transfer chains and ATP synthases embedded in the mitochondrial membrane are used to produce ATP. The oxygen keeps the machinery running by binding and removing the spent electrons. Now let's go to the specialized plant cell structures. Let's uh, have first the central vacuole. This is a micrograph of a plant cell, a cross section from a blade of Timothy grass. The open area at the center is the central vacuole. In living plant cell, the vacuole is fluid filled storage area for amino acids, sugars, ions, and toxic waste. Another specialized plant cell structure is the chloroplast. This is a cutaway view of a chloroplast. Two outer membrane layers enclose a largely fluid interior called the stroma. The thylakoid membrane system weaves through the stroma. The thylakoid membrane is folded into a system of interconnecting disc-shaped compartments. In many chloroplasts, these compartments stack one atop another. Each step is a granule. Embedded in the thylakoid membrane are the light-trapping pigments, enzymes, and other proteins that carry out the first stage of, of photosynthesis. This is a cutaway view of one disc in a granule. The thylakoid membrane separates the thylakoid compartment from the stroma. During the first part of photosynthesis, these elements work together to absorb sunlight energy and store it in the form of ATP. So the second part of photosynthesis occurs in the stroma. ATP energy is used to make sugars, starch, and other molecules from carbon dioxide and water. Now let us have a quick look at photosynthesis. This is an overview of photosynthesis. The light-dependent reactions split water and produce ATP and NADPH. Oxygen is a byproduct of these reactions. ATP and NADPH together with the carbon dioxide are reactants in the light-independent reactions. The products are sugars, NADP, ADP, and inorganic phosphate. The light-dependent and the light-independent reactions thus form a cycle in which the net inputs are water and carbon dioxide and the net outputs are oxygen and carbohydrates. Another plant, or specialized plant cell structure is the cell wall. The first wall formed in the actively growing regions is the primary cell wall. Primary cell walls are thin and pliable and allow cells to continue to enlarge. Cell secretions form the middle lamella, a layer between the adjoining cells. Membrane line channels called the plasmodesmata connect the cytoplasm of the adjacent cells and in many cells, additional layers are deposited inside the primary wall. These layers stiffen the wall and helps maintain its shape. In some cases, the cells die and leave only the stiffened wall. Now let's go to other cell organelles. 
first, the cytoskeletal elements. There are three cytoskeletal elements. These are the microtubules, microfilaments, and the intermediate filaments. So, let's uh, have a look at the microtubule first. Microtubule is a straight, hollow cylinder built from tubulin monomers. When a microtubule is assembled, all of its monomers are oriented in the same direction. This assembly pattern puts slightly different chemical properties at opposite ends of the cylinder. The, each microfilament is composed of two helically twisted polypeptide chains. The chains are assembled from actin monomers. Like microtubules, microfilaments can be assembled and disassembled. Intermediate filaments are the most stable cytoskeletal elements. The six known groups occur only in certain animal cells. They strengthen and help maintain the shape of cells and cell parts. Now let us go to cilia and flagella. This is the structure of the cilia or flagella. Its cilium or flagellum arises from the centriole. The centriole remains at the base where it is known as the basal body. Let's take a closer look at its structure. Both cilia and flagella have ring of nine pairs of microtubules arranged around a central pair in a 9 plus 2 array. Dynein arm extends from each doublet to another doublet in the ring. When the flagellum is not bent, all microtubule doublets extend the same distance. Inputs of ATP cause the dynein arm of one doublet to attach two pair in front, tilt downward, and release the hold. Repeated stokes make the pair slide past each other, causing the flagellum to bend. This process is done alternately, so flagellum bends one way, then another. Now let us go to lysosomes. Lysosomes are actually one of my favorite cell organelles. Lysosomes are tiny sacs which function in first heterophagy. Heterophagy is the taking into the cell of exogenous material by phagocytosis or pinocytosis and the digestion of the ingested materials from fusion of the newly formed vacuole with a lysosome. Another function is autophagy. This is a normal physiological process that deals with the destruction of cells in the body. It is essential for maintaining homeostasis, for normal functioning by protein degradation, turnover of cell organelles for new cell formation. Another function is extracellular digestion. Primary lysosomes secret hydrolases outside by exocytosis, resulting in degradation of extracellular materials. Another function is autolysis. It refers to the killing of the entire set of cells by breakdown of the lysosomal membrane. It occurs during amphibian and insect metamorphosis. That is why the lysosome is sometimes called the seaside bed. Another function is fertilization. You know, the uh, acrosome of the sperm head is a giant lysosome. And that ruptures and releases enzymes on the surface of the egg. This provides the way for the sperm to enter into the egg by digesting the egg membrane. And another function is as janitors of the cell. Lysosomes remove junk that may accumulate in the cell, helping to prevent diseases. Another cell structure is the peroxisome. Peroxisomes are oxidative membrane-bound organelles found in the cytoplasm of all the eukaryotes. The name is accredited due to their hydrogen peroxide generating and removing activities. Peroxisomes are involved in the production and elimination of hydrogen peroxide during biochemical processes. Oxidation of fatty acids takes place within peroxisomes. Additionally, 
Peroxisomes are also involved in the synthesis of lipid-like cholesterol and plasmalogens. That's all for the ultrastructure of the cell. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something from it.